Our last speaker before lunch is Dr. Gauri Das from Balurghat College, Kolkata. She will be speaking on evaluation of utilization potentiality of rhizosphere microflora of Azadirakta indica in the management of crop productivity. Very good afternoon to the respected, to respected chairperson and reporter, sir, August audience, my colleagues, friends, and teachers. This is indeed my great privilege to stand here and share some of my research activities, uh, which we undertake, undertake uh, so like uh, with some of our teammates who are already present here from Kolkata. So I would like to introduce them also. This is Namda Motijil College from where uh, my other colleagues, they belong, and I am from Baluhat College. Actually, uh, today um, I take this great privilege of uh, thanking the organizers, especially Dr. S.K. Tripathi for allowing us to share the dais with one of my colleagues, uh, Professor Julan Basu. And this is my great opportunity to express my gratitude to the teachers that I have in this forum, uh, Dr. A.P. Das and Dr. Haradhan Sah. Now, my topic here today to present is evaluation of the utilization potentiality of the rhizosphere microflora of as a director indica lean in the management of crop productivity. I must make one hum humble submission here because inadvertently we just wrote this as a director indica lean author citation should be mania as a director lean or synonymous as a director indica ages and according to the plant list 1830 background of the study as all of us we are aware of the fact that the plant as a director indica commonly called margosa tree is well known to us for its medicinal potentiality and it is grown in all over the country and everywhere so what was our uh, Objective of the study actually wanted to know the competence of the tree to grow everywhere, uh, uh, just to know the bioedific factors, how it affects the plant uh, microorganisms in relation to its in insecticidal and antipathogenic properties, uh, and how it can just help us in crop disease management. And uh, rhizosphere has not so far been explored in the purview of the enhancement of crop productivity. Aims and objectives, as I already have mentioned, that we wanted to isolate and characterize some of the microorganisms from soil, uh, the noble ecological niche like rhizosphere. Now I must tell a little about rhizosphere. Uh, we know that the uh, particles, soil particles that are closely associated with rootlets or root of any plant is known as rhizosphere soil and whereas uh, the soil particles or soil that is far from the root of uh, at least one meter is known as non-rhizosphere soil. We just have considered the rhizosphere soil from 16 different sites throughout the West Bengal. Next uh, is our objective is a study of uh, uh, to study the phosph phosphate solubilizing efficiency of any potent microorganisms if we can just isolate from the rhizosphere soil. Last but not the least, uh, in this trifold aims and objectives, we have uh, studied uh, exploration of the possible field of bioprospective potentiality of the isolates. Now I must go to the methodology. And we have followed serial dilution method as usual for isolation of rhizosphere micro, uh, microorganisms. Mainly we have considered actinomycetes, uh, fungi and uh, bacteria. For actinomycetes we have used uh, general uh, uh, GYA agar uh, media like glycerol yeast agar media. And for uh, fungi we have taken suburb agar medium and for bacteria as usual nutrient agar. And the thing is, uh, we have microbial count, we counted microbial population and we also have observed the characteristic features morphologically and their colonial appearance. Uh, so organisms are bacteria uh, like and actinomycetes here and fungi or molds 
So types of colonies based on cultural morphology, we have studied that and we have also taken account of CFU, that is uh, organisms per gram soil uh, is equal to number of mean of the colonies uh, and into the dilution factor. So um, these are the isolates. We have got bacterial isolates, RAW1, uh, uh, to RAW5 and R stands for rhizosphere, rhizosphere A stands for as a director and W stands for West Bengal. Since we have just considered ultimate uh, northern part of West Bengal to the southern part like northern in northern part we have considered Kojbihar district and in southern part we have also gone uh, up to Sundarbans to collect rhizosphere soil and we have uh, seen that in uh, our um, collection we have got bacterial culture five types amongst them we have tested gram, uh, gram nature of them uh, three of them are gram negative well two are gram positive and morphological characteristics also I must uh, say something about it rods small rods and mostly haplobacilli that is they remain singly in gram negative raw one case so various cultural characteristics they are yellow slimy and uh, shiny and smooth and moderate growth they do have moderate growth and other types are like uh, small rod chain forming uh, chains are short and branched in case of raw2 and uh, they produce whitish dry mat showing slow growth and some more cases we have seen in other cases raw 3 gram negative and cocci mostly diplococci, creamy white translucent, shiny, moderately slowing, growing and raw 4 it's gram positive rod shaped cells having distinct morphology long chain forming bacilli and white fused colony rapidly growing and irregular margin slimy character and this uh, raw 5 is gram positive chain forming cocci while white colony with raised margin slow growing. Now what about the fungal characters? Fungal, uh, fungi has raw uh, 6 to raw 7, raw 8 and uh, they have cottony white uh, mycelial masses, crust uh, the rapid growing, uh, uh, rapid growing cells and raw 7 and 8 they are also like uh, crust growing but they remain, uh, become sometimes change their colors as they grow older and this is the rhizospheric effect of microbial population as we see some of the plants they exude uh, uh, exude uh, uh, some chemicals especially phenolics from their roots to combat uh, or keep some of the microorganisms at bay and in uh, this proportion we can see number of microorganisms per gram of soil rhizospheric soil i mean and number of some microorganisms per non rhizospheric soil, when it is less than one, we consider that soil is not at all suitable for the microorganisms to grow. So with this, uh, may I now request um, uh, my co-presenter, Julan, Professor Julan Basu, to take over the presentation further. Thank you, sir. Okay. Another speaker. Huh? Yeah, yeah. Okay, continue, please. Uh, good afternoon. And thank you, Dr. Bugauri. Now, uh, now I'm explaining about the efficient phosphate solubilized, so, solubilization uh, isolates. <coughs> uh, <coughs> the isolates are well maintained as pure culture and strict on the pickups comedia, which contains uh, tricalcium phosphate. And after the inoculation, the isolates are subjected to incubation at the 37 degrees centigrade, and we observed these results. Now, among the bacteria, that is raw food, we observed highest number of the zone of inhibition on the stringing point. This is the this is the zone of inhibition. The highest number of uh, zone of inhibition we found. And uh, <coughs> simultaneously, fungi also have the uh, one more raw seven isolates that also shows uh, highest number of zone of diameter. We'll see the next one. This is the fungal one. So now this is the uh, things that 
uh, the degree of solubilization of the phosphate, which is determined by the, the diameter of the zone of inhibition. So highest zone of inhibition shows the highest phosphate solubilization, solubilization activity. This is uh, the, iso uh, the bacteria, the raw food. Then we are strict on the neutral agar plate. And you observe the vigorous growth of the bacteria, the full uh, the plate uh, over, uh, over the uh, full plate plates. And this is the uh, notable feature. And other one, we, uh, the two uh, uh, bacteria, one is uh, raw and other, other one is normal bacteria. We strict on the parallel one like this. And we observe that the zone of inhibition between the line. And that, that means the some antagonistic product <coughs> may be secreted on this line and it shows the, uh, and it inhibits the growth of the other bacteria. This is the fungal one. And now I'm going to uh, tell about the phylogenetic analysis. <coughs> it's a normal process. And where the <coughs> we identify the uh, uh, characterizations and the uh, bacterial uh, phylogenetic uh, positions. Where the microbial culture, we are used as a soup or in a broad culture, the DNA is isolated and the 16 is amplicon generated with the using of primers. So these are the primers and the amplicon is sequenced and the sequenced amplicon is generated and selections of the top, they, we are selected the top hits uh, <coughs> topics amplicons with the help of NCBI gene bank database and after that the distinct matrix was generated and the constructions of the phylogenetic tree was generated as a, uh, using of mega cell and the organ the bacteria will, bacteria was identified the bacteria this is the blast data and this is the reports and this is the phylogenetic tree and uh, this is the uh, based on the nucleotide, nucleotide homology and phylogenetic analysis. The sample we all, all just uh, 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 we've, uh, we got the name of the bacteria that is uh, that that was a raw food that was a hundred percent homology with the bacterial species strain. The bank one nine six gene bank as accession number is that. Then come to the conclusions point. <clears throat> the microbial diversity in the rhizosphere of Azadiracta indica growing in West Bengal is not significant. Uh, microbial amalgamation is unique because it is identical nature irrespective of the habitat of the plant. A type of the bacterial fungal isolates the similar in the occurrence but the quantity of gram of soil is defined. The rhizospheric effect corroborates our findings that allows the growth of some selected microbes which have the ability to overcome the unfavorable microenvironment micro prevailing the rhizosphere. The rhizosphere of this plant is herbal of one efficient phosphate solubilizing bacteria that is we found bacillus species which is not only stress resistant but also vigorously growing but also antagonistic activity have we found and to the in the bacterial populations which may be pathogenic to the host and as revealed through in our in vitro study. Now the future perspective, the pos <coughs> sorry, the positive correlation about be established between the physiochemical parameters of the soil and microbial biomass with the view of um, the soil in such a manner so that biomass of phosphate solubilizing bacteria could be obtained at the satisfactory level which is required to enhance the crop productivity. The suitable biofertilizer formation formulations could be developed with the help of this potent isolate for the better crop productions. Isolation and identification of the novel compound or the principal compound from the efficient PSR. The having antagonistic uh, potentiality could be possible feed for the for the research field. And the structural modeling of phosphatase enzymes of PSI with the help of bioinformatical approach. 
Uh, it's uh, not uh, acting the animation yet. It was the animations. It's okay. They, okay, okay. I'll, I'll show the picture. I'll, I'll show the photograph with our colleagues. Oh, it is coming. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. These are the colleagues. I am from Microbiology Department, Motijil College. And she was uh, in Balugar College, but our work place was the Dhamma Motijil College, the collaboration work. So our first picture was Mudanda Motijil College. It's OK. Now, thank you very much, both of you. Uh, we may have one question quickly. This is our colleagues. Thank you. So we have finished this session. So we have, we had three presentations, 30 minute presentations and three 10 minute presentations. So the first speaker, Dr. Mao spoke very well on the good harvest practices, handling, post handling of medicinal plants and how it should be handled. And uh, how he showed that over harvesting of taxes and many other medicinal plants have affected uh, the, uh, the health of the medicinal plant scenario in different places uh, in the Himalayas. Dr. Arijit Roy spoke well on uh, how climatic changes affected the Texas uh, Wallichiana distribution in Western Himalaya and uh, particularly focusing on climate change uh, scenarios and he used uh, ecological niche modeling and uh, global climate uh, models uh, particularly the RCP 4.5 and 6 to project different climate change scenarios and how it will affect uh, Texas Wallichiana populations. A uh, third presentation from Dr. Bhim Pratap Singh he nicely presented how uh, actinobacteria can be used for growth promoting activity. Not only that, it can be used as an alternative source of active ingredients of medicinal importance. And the other speakers, uh, three presentations from uh, colleges uh, have uh, spoken very nicely uh, on their respective areas, particularly on the chemistry, on the microbiology aspects. Uh, so thank you. Uh, Everyone, thank you, Professor Tripathi, for giving me the opportunity to come to Mizoram and also speak, which I will be speaking in the uh, after post-lunch session, and also giving me an opportunity to chair the session. And I must thank uh, my co-chair, Mr. Upadhyay, for helping me. Thank you. Request Professor B. Gopichand, Cinemas Professor of our department, to felicitate Chairman Sir. Good afternoon, everyone. It's my great pleasure to chair this session. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank the organizing committee for giving me this opportunity. For this session, we are having three invited uh, talk. I don't know if this, uh, the third person has come or not. Otherwise, there's two. The first and second, I can see in the audience. But the third one, <coughs> this uh, Professor R.K. Dubey. Is it, he has come or not? Okay, then also we have uh, this uh, presentation, five presentation. That is, uh, uh, I think I will not read out. So, but then uh, we'll start with the first, uh, and, uh, and, uh, I must also go tell my rep, uh, this, uh, your name, what? Nandarin Emmana. <laughs> she is our reporter. You see, uh, um, we have already seen 
from the morning and yesterday presentation, the different topics, and to the, now the session is on cultivation management and trade marketing of medicinal and aromatic plant. So this is a very uh, appropriate for the present of uh, this today's uh, seminar because that is where having seminar on MAP. So, <clears throat> and then the presenters are going to be, I mean, this, uh, they are all very expert and very senior and very uh, well-known people from the field. So that will be, I'm sure the, the presentation will be very uh, helpful to you all. Now we have uh, our first presenter, that is Dr. Pranav Kumar Shaha. He is an <coughs> ex-horticulturist, directorate of Sinkoena and other medicinal plants, government of Meghalaya. I mean, West Bengal, sorry, government of West Bengal, sorry. Uh, then uh, present, uh, present occupation, of course, he's retired three years ago. So now he's a consultant, horticulturist, and then uh, member, member scientist of this uh, Asian Marine Conservation Association. I wonder how he come for Marine uh, Conservation Association. It's quite interesting. And then, of course, his qualification is um, um, uh, PhD in science, that is PhD in agronomy and developmental physiolo physiology, then certificate course in personal management from IM uh, Calcutta, then uh, <coughs> trained horticulturist management uh, from Hyderabad. So then also he has an experience of 34 years in Sincona and other medicinal plants. And he's also nominated members of uh, advisory committee for not North Bengal University and guest faculty for tea management and pharmacognosy in North Bengal University. So he has a vast experience from this, you can know. So I now I call upon uh, Dr. Pranap Kumar Shaha to come and make the presentation. Namaste. Good afternoon to all. Respected chairman, reporters, dignitaries of the dais, researchers, scientists, students. My topic <coughs> was selected hurriedly and I am very much thankful to Professor S.K. Tripathi. He called me over phone to make a presentation. So I am lucky enough that the medicinal plants, cultivation, development, management, marketing, I am dealing with last 34 years. And now I got the opportunity to share with you about a success story from the farmer levels. Because from yesterday to day to day till now, we have heard so many developmental works on the uh, conservation, exploitation, screening, taxonomical works, and but I am not finding any cultivation approach. So friend, my present discussion is an attempt to highlight the success story of the commercial cultivation of some selected endangered medicinal plants as sustainable crops for an approach to their conservation. Every aspects have some background. This study and success story, we have a background of about 4,000 of hectares of cultivation, under cultivation, that is directed of Shinkona, we have got four plantations <coughs> and about 5,000 permanent workers there. So daily, daily work is scheduled for the cultivation, management, interculture operation, as well as harvesting. And we are the monopoly for cultivating Shinkona, Ipikak, Diascorea and other medicinal plants. 
and it depends on the demand of the internal and external market. Accordingly, we switch over to different medicinal plants cultivation and it has been asserted that both nationally and globally, IUS system is dependent on uninterrupted availability of plant-based raw materials. It is well known to all, those who are dealing with the medicinal plants. And more than 90% of the species are being used in trade from natural resources, which two-third harvested destructive. And we are now anxious for this destructive collection. So the question arises and we are after the conservation and as well as for the cultivation. And in director of Shinkona, in the year 2011-12, National Medicinal Plants Mission adopted different projects for the farmers level cultivation. And all are project oriented. And we'll, um, I, should, I will come later on how we will select the farmers, how the quality planting materials is distributed among the marginal farmers, progressive farmers, and uh, how marketing is done, uh, internal market to feed the internal market as well as external market. And India is sharing 3 to 4 percent of the world trade. Right? And as per whose forecast, it is the world trade continuing counting about five trillion dollar by 2050. And the same study I have seen when uh, Dr. Mao was uh, projecting uh, the marketing system uh, on harvesting technology. We have selected these medicinal plants for low altitude and high altitude. The low altitude plants, the Zerawafia serpentina up to 5,000 meters, Vitania somniferia below 500 meters, and Piper Langam up to 500 meters, Gymnema silvestris up to 500 meters, and aloe vera asparagus. Though we are not so much interested on in cultivation of aloe vera, I will come later on why. And for the high altitude, the most important plant that is endangered now is Swetia chirota. There is an abundance of Swetia chirota was in Darjeeling hills, including Sikkim hills. And now we are, we have gone through the farmer's level cultivation to conserve as well as for the exploitation. And Nardotic is Jatamanshi. This is also collected from wild source. This is a natural in Darjeeling Hills, the lower Himalaya, uh, sorry, the Himalayan region, including Sikkim and part of Nepal and, including, and Bhutan also. And we have found that the unscrupulous, unscientific collection and selling out through the different traders. And very interesting that our government previously allowed to collect from the forest to sell it through traders to the different pharmaceutical company. And perhaps uh, you know the Siliguri was the center for trading different medicinal plants collected from natural resources and that is sold to the pharmaceutical company directly. As for example, Indian pharmaceutical company. And even Himalayan drugs, they are also collecting unauthorizedly through the traders. But there is no restriction from the government side. But nowadays, it is, we are very happy, those who are after the conservation of different medicinal plants. 
that forest department they are very strict now even if you care, if you collect without authorization a single plant any plant you have to answer you have to justify why you are collecting so why we selected this whitenia somnifera whitenia somnifera is not endangered but the cultivation is less is demand is high as for example uh, whitenia this is a prevailing market trade is 300 to 400 kilo per kilo and my approach in concluding uh, discussion i will show you why i am selecting this not this specially mizoram because this area till virginity of the uh, forest area is highest in comparison to other region and this whitenia somnifera is 4 to 6 months crops and the return is about 7 times in comparison to the cost norms the cost norm is determined by the national medicinal plants mission so any farmers those who are interested they can grow whitenia somnifera the four or six, four to six months crop and then can they can earn about five to six lakhs from one hectare that is established similarly raulfia serpentina you know raulfia serpentina is when in the year 1985 i traveled all the states of northeast except mizoram that was political disturbance in Nagaland and Unachal. I could not enter in this region, but I surveyed Unachal Pradesh, Assam, Lower Assam, and I found abundance of Raulfia Serpentina. But the picture is changed. That is due to unscrupulous, unscientific collection. And so we are now concerned about the cultivation. Why? The scientist, you are the scientist, you are conserving as a charplasm or as clone in a why we are very much interested in Raulfia very recently in the year 2016 <coughs> only 2 kg through Kolkata air cargo exported to Germany and the rate you will <coughs> surprise the 24,160 k rupees 168 rupees per kilo. Why? The prevailing rate is only 900 rupees per kilo. That is due to demand. And our, from our experience, it has been found that there is a graph. This is a peak season, peak collection period or purchasing period. And that the global market is controlled by the European communities. And we have found, and it is established fact, that every six to eight years, there is an ups and then downs of the market for different medicinal plants, which are collected from natural collections. But nowadays, different countries are under commercial cultivation. So the demand this started the high demand from 2006 to 14, and then 2016 you find that there was peak, and now it is going down and down. So, for the management, I will come. What are the objects for the conservation? for the commercial cultivation and you are the scientist you are the researchers what you are doing you are making the herbal gardens most of the universities they are conserving 
the different important medicinal plants in a small garden, this herbal garden, and it, may, it is institutional, it may call, and it may be private or maybe government. And of course, this household garden is there. But this <coughs> conservation is not scientific. There are same species, same variety is not prevailing in different gardens. So if we take the quality planting materials, resources from this institutional or household garden, then the quantity of the active constituents will differ. And in the market, perhaps you know, the rate of the particular medicinal plants, as for example, Dioscorea. When we were selling Dioscorea, Deltoidea, and Dioscorea floribanda, we were very rich in the cultivation of Dioscorea floribanda. This one kg of dry roots, what are the contents of the diazidine content of that, say, if it is 1%, then the and rate is, it is 9 rupees per kilo, then the cultivator will get, if it is 3%, then 9 into 3, 27 per kilo. So we are very much interested to maintain the characteristics of the alkaloid and steroid con content of the plants. Especially for the Dioscorea, we maintain the clone as 3 to 5 percent at least. Similarly, we are monopoly in the cultivation of epicac. And so the large scale conservation is only possible if we go for commercial cultivation. And commercial cultivation is depending on the local market as well as distant market. And keeping in mind the why we will go for the commercial cultivation, for the industrialization. Earlier many speakers told that the different, even Professor Rao told that we have no such specific medicinal plants that we can uh, boldly say that these medicinal plants we can uh, compete with the uh, uh, combat globally. So the germplasm collections is important, but quality planting materials for the commercial cultivation is also very, very important. So to feed the industries, commercial cultivation is required throughout the country. And for the selection of particular medicinal plants, whether it is endangered or it's readily available, that is, first is infrastructure. Infrastructure, what is? The availability of the cultivation area, storing, the marketing network, etc., etc., and planning also. Then, what types of, and whether it is a single crop or we will grow as an intercrop. Especially we recommend for the cultivation of Raulvia serpentina in ericala plantation. Why? Ericala plantation is in between row, there's back and land. And if we cultivate, Raulfia Serpentina, that will be the additional revenue from that land. At the same time, we recommend to cultivate black pepper as a support of the Erika nut. So, we can cultivate three crops in a single land, in demarcated land. 
So we have to make a planning, good planning. Whether we will go for intercrop or as a single crop. For Vaitanya, Vaitanya somnifera is very interesting. The sandy soil, the unfertile soil, the fellow land is very much favorable to give the maximum return from that land. Why? We are cultivating the different medicinal plants, the different pharmaceutical companies and the traders, they are always after the constituents percentage, the active constituents percentage in that particular medicinal plants. So, if there is single crop cultivation of Vaitanya somnifera, we found that that it is common science that is uh, if it is in, uh, grown in stress condition the alkaloid percentage will be more or active constituent percentage will be more but for Hoitania somnifera we prefer the sandy loam soil why there is a root system is there we are after the production of roots the Low altitude, do we, I uh, mentioned this Vaitanya somnifera, Raulfia serpentina, as well as Osimum, the different species Osimum, Gradesimum, Oxidum, Basilicum. Basilicum is more priced and more demand is there. And when I visited Kanoj, the phytochemical corporation is there. And there are hundreds of acres is under basilica cultivation. And they are extracting perfume. So the planning should be like that. Whether the product, the estimated product, will be marketed internally or externally. And another is the sensitivity, sensitivity Factor is there, there is no malpractice should be there. What is the malpractice? Most of the traders mixed the particular medicinal plants with the similar species or different species because most of the medicinal plants sold in dry condition. So, when we will sell the product, the plant produce, then we have to keep in mind, we have to involve ourselves directly to the uh, purchaser, especially pharmaceutical companies. And there is a direct relation of market and traders. Traders, what they do? When you cannot store the medicinal brands, uh, earlier uh, Dr. Mao told that the Techniques, the harvest technology is most important, and I will come in later. On, I will come later on. That is, what is the factors between the traders and market? The global situation is also affecting the local market. Nowadays, there is a tremendous demand of Raulfia serpentina, so. The traders are finding, they are searching where we can get the bulk. During cultivation, one thing should keep in mind regarding the manuring. Other operations, planting, interculture, spacing of the space, plant, plants, the particular uh, crop, that is, is very common. But Manuring, we should not use any chemical fertilizer for the cultivation of medicinal plants. That is very, very important. As well as no insecticides and pesticides should be used in, in the management of the crops. We have experienced the 
hundreds of metric ton and queen, hundred, uh, queen, more than 100 quintals of fin, uh, raw materials that has been sold out from our department, even from the farmers. But they reject it all because they found the trace elements and residual uh, chemicals in the medicinal plants. So it will be no use. So we, when we train the farmers for our project, then we always recommend you may use organic fertilizer, simply compost, forest soil, or if it, cow dung is available, barmi, etc. And similarly, for the disease and pest, we are lucky enough the commercial cultivation, cultivated uh, medicinal plants like Huitania, like uh, Raulfia, like Dioscoria, like Ipica, there is a least chance of havoc effect by the different diseases and pests. Only we found in Raulfia Serpentina when this is a two to four years crop. It is another important thing. We, uh, during selection, we have to see the, what is the life cycle of that particular crops. For the high altitude crops, earlier I have given the table that Texas Becata, it will take 10, 12, 15, 40, 50 years to sold out the product, uh, plant products. For accumulative variables, little less time. For Suecia Chiruta, we have to wait 4, 5 years, even 6 years to get good in. So that is also important. And there is disease and pest for the, especially for Raulfia Serpentina, during winter season, there is an attack of powdery mildew. And powdery mildew, we are fortunate enough that is not much effect on the root system. The effect in the leaf, so when winter is gone, fresh rain, so again fresh beautiful leaves will come. For remedial measure, if it is two to three years old, then we can harvest not scientifically, there is a crude method. We recommend for harvesting of Raulfia serpentina as a crude method. Why? When, like the collectors from natural sources, from the forest, if you uproot the uh, Raulfia serpentina, then few portions of the roots will remain in the soil. And that is also a type of conservation. We have found this root cutting of Rahul Ravya Sarvita is very, very successful. Though we, uh, commercially we cultivate uh, through seeds because there is no chance of cross-pollination because this isolation is there, no other plantation of different uh, species or varieties of Rahul Ravya Sarpentina. And for quality, Planting materials, if we go for the control cultivation, control chamber, then we may have the quality planting materials when needed. This is harvesting. And another important factor is leveling, packaging, storing. Earlier, uh, Dr. Mao told about, I will not repeat it, why, uh, how uh, storing is required. Uh, for the medicinal plants, it is very, very important. And this is a very, very important is market survey. Market survey, there is a two system. One is two tier system, another is three tier system. Two tier system is internal, directly from growers to traders, and three tier system is external, growers, traders, and exporters. So it is very simple, but the knot is 
in between the marketing network and internal and external. What is the marketing network? Marketing network, we, what we have done, the forest department in West Bengal, they have some outlet for selling of medicinal plants. Because different medicinal plants, we, till we cannot grow commercially in commercial scale, so they purchase from directly from the uh, farmers. So sale is assured in small scale also. And forest department, they sell the uh, finished product. And what are the viable alternatives? To protect the natural habitat of medicinal plants, local plant biodiversity, to procure in the market commercially, organized cultivation of the medicinal plants is required, which can protect the endangered plant species, protect the biodiversity, augment of socioeconomic development. It is also very important because the small marginal followers are engaged to cultivate the uh, uh, medicinal plants, different medicinal plants. And cultivation of the adopted and desired medicinal plants is the only viable alternative. And our action plan was, sir, excuse me, I will take another two minutes. And action plans, we selected different altitudinal uh, uh, places for the farmers' cultivation. And the details of cultivation was given to the farmers and we trained them after several training classes, farmers training, and as well as demonstration plots. So they are well trained to cultivate any medicinal plants that we have recommended. And the cost norms, it is mandatory and it is given by the National Medicinal Plants Mission. And that is 25,000, 30,000 and so on. And Percentage of subsidies depends on the availability of the quality planting materials. In case of Aconitum, Suecia, Chirota, 75% is available. But other for other medicinal plants is 20% subsidy. So there is another financial assistance as a subsidy from the central government, that is through National Medicinal Plants Mission. And in case of uh, National uh, Suecia Chirota, one farmer can get 61,875 rupees subsidy from the government side. And what are the facilities? Facilities available in West Bengal, there is director of Shinkona Medicinal Plants, abundance, uh, scope, and state horticultural farm and research station. In Arunachal Pradesh State Forest Department, CSR stations, BSI field stations, Ashram, Agritech Private, Ayurveda uh, and Guwahati University, Meghalaya, BSI, Shilam, Nehu, etc., Tripura and Mijoram. Mijoram State Medicinal Plants Board is there and Mijoram University is doing excellent job on medicinal plants, conservation and cultivation. And this is the chart from the National Medicinal Plants Mission subsidy for to make one market. If it is public sector, then 200 lakhs, that is 2 crores, is available as in financial assistance. So it is, there is no problem to develop a market, a market hub, as well as testing lab. <coughs> And for the processing unit, even pack house, any, any farmers, any entrepreneurs can have the uh, subsidy. There is also uh, DPR uh, to be submitted and all are project oriented for the nursery also. And it is the picture of the farmers level cultivation of Raulfia serpentina. There is a young plant. And this is two years mature plant, so it will be harvested after one year. This is also your plantation. And this is the 
harvesting the mature plantation in three years. We are harvesting at three years for minimizing the cost of cultivation. And this is the field of Vidania somnifera and six months crop. And we get two ways benefited from this Vidania somnifera. We can sell the seeds as well as the roots. That is assistance from National Medicinal Plants Mission and farmers are going very nicely in the uh, barren land. This is the roots. And this is another important is Gymnema silvestris. It is an antidiabetic property, it is established and Forest Corporation is purchasing in terms of tons. And this is also Gymnema silvestris, this is a mature plant. And this is asparagus, we have tried this in crude method. And aloe vera, we never recommend aloe vera, that is not possible in northeast because the growth is uh, less in comparison to other states. Uh, and the extraction unit plant is not there. There will be, uh, we will get four hours to take this uh, juice from uh, leaves or uh, uh, exporting uh, to the factories. That will, four hours time is there. Otherwise, active consumption will be gone. And another is uh, Acoros calamus. This is in marsh area, there is no crops will survive. There's commercial crops. So we can grow botch. There is uh, Acoros calamus. This uh, market is very high now. This is 200 to 600 per kilo. And the oil extracted from these rhizomes is 6 to 7,000 per kilo. And Amelinga is not success. And getting the data from the farmer's level, we have calculated, that is calculated from bigger to a hectare, as a small farmers, six to eight months growth, they are getting three lakhs, 42,000 approximately. There is calculated value at the rate of 3, 000, uh, 350 kilo per kilo. Uh, and the yield is 1100 approximately. We have some and other, uh, so that's why. <laughs> Can you wind up? One minute, sir. This is a recommendation and present proposal. It is uh, concluding. Uh, I am concluding with this present proposal. The main object for the pro project proposal is the extension of cultivation of selected medicinal plants in entire Northeast through the activities of the project. Not only the cultivation will be extended. It is proposed to impart proper training to the intended farmers about cultivation, harvest and storage methodology, tackling diseases and pests, etc. as a sustainable crops. The project authority will also to develop a marketing system in northeastern regions. And the objectives of the present proposals are like that. And the marketing network uh, is highlighted. Network development is essential and government assistance is required. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Shah. We are running out of time, so let's not uh, take questions from uh, this thing. So, no, no, it's okay. We will see afterward when everyone is finished and if anybody is uh, interested to ask questions. But uh, what Dr. Shah can do is, I think, the Mizoram University can invite him once again uh, for giving this uh, lecture. Now, this will be very useful for the farmers and for the local people. Okay, then we'll go ahead with the next speaker. The next speaker is Dr. S.K. Nandi. Uh, he will be speaking on in vitro propagation of selected Himalayan medicinal herbs, conservation and sustainable utilization. He's a very experienced person. And so he has done his B.Sc. honors from Viswa Bharati uh, Santiniketan, then M.Sc. in plant physiology, from J.P. Pan University uh, Agri uh, Agriculture and Technology, that is Pannaga, then PhD from Australian National University, Canberra. Then uh, he joined uh, as scientist in Siasa Complex, uh, Palampu. Then uh, he from in 
1989, then after from 93 onward as scientist and he has uh, been working in the various capacity and in different places. And um, I think I will not say all, but then all of a he he has completed. Uh, I mean, uh, 12 PhD students completed under him, and also called 25 uh, students uh, MSc dissertation, and he is a, a specialized and also go members of. Uh, Several societies, including the Plant Tissue Culture Association in India, Society of Biological Chemistry, the Society for Tree Scientists, American Society for Plant Physiologists, and so that he has a vast experience in different aspects. And his, um, I mean, he also received several awards, like uh, Visit Veganic Award by Ministry of Environment Forest. ICFRI Award for Forestry. Then also he specializes in his seed biology, plant pathology, and plant propagation. Uh, then uh, this uh, iron uptake, kinetic. And so, a lot of, uh, I mean, vast, in the vast field, he has a very uh, big experience. So now I think, um, I will not read to us, a lot is there, so since we are running short of time, yes. so I will request uh, Dr. Nandi to start yeah. with his uh, talk. Okay. Most of the work, uh, I mean the, all the work uh, which I have, uh, I will be presenting has been carried out at G.B. Pant uh, National Institute of Himalayan Environment and Development where I worked for more than 25 years and I am now superannuated. So I will be uh, talking mainly on in vitro propagation of selected medicinal uh, herbs, uh, how we can conserve through in vitro and its sustainable utilization. You know, uh, I will not uh, show details of this slide because it has already been told earlier by Dr. Rao and Dr. Das and Dr. Mao. So the important thing which I would like to highlight is that, uh, that India has a very good chance and uh, as told earlier, that US dollar 15 billion is the export value, and uh, the war, India would uh, have about uh, 6.5 billion uh, uh, um, exports of uh, medicinal plants, and it is the source is uh, Pharma Excel. <coughs> So importance of medicinal plant, I need not go again. So I will skip this slide. And uh, also I will not uh, uh, talk about that. See, this is the vast Himalayan region. We have 12 states. Uh, and I would be talking, uh, focusing on the Uttarakhand uh, portion where some of the studies on medicinal plants have been carried out. And Mizoram has a very good potential. And some of the plants would be quite common in this area also. So again, not to talk about the importance of the Himalayan region. Uh, and again, the same thing. I have put it for the interest of the students, but they have been already dwelt with. And again, uh, the same thing, uh, not to uh, talk in detail. Everyone knows, based on the data from Sam and Tetal, that with the Himalayan medicinal plants comprises of angiosperm, gymnosperm, these are the numbers, it's a number game. Uh, see, on Uttarakhand, we have about 682 species of medicinal plants, and among them, 682 is a gymno uh, angiosperms, and 12 gymnosperms and ferns. So based on the data from here. And uh, out of the species, uh, so many are trees, shrubs, and herbs, these number of herbs in Uttarakhand, which are of medicinal importance. And species of high uh, consumption value in the state of Uttarakhand, these are the species are, which are in high uh, consumption uh, rate, and they are in demand. And uh, these are the, some of the plants. The list is not complete. These are the plants which are being mainly exported from India and these are the species and these are the plant parts and uh, these are highly uh, valued plants. And uh, I can skip this. See, the state of Uttarakhand, they have prioritized uh, many of these medicinal plants which are being exported 
and this list indicates uh, 28 medicinal plants and which are also cultivated in the state. And they are, these many plants uh, are, uh, can, be cala uh, can be collected from the wild. Uh, I not. So uh, these medicinal plants uh, of the Himalaya are very important and we all know from the earlier times they are a source of uh, high value medicinal plants and they are used in modern day medicines. These are some of the examples like aconitum, it contains the major constituents aconitine and we look for these uh, constituents as the active principles and uh, these are the uh, other plants too, Hedicium, Habenaria, Edgeworthy, this is an orchid, Virginia, Asparagus, uh, the list is long and many others, Picoriza, Kurua, Paris, Podophyllum, Hexandrum, Valerina, these are high valued herbs. So uh, today, uh, for the sake of the students mainly, I would like to talk on how uh, you uh, go ahead with the development of plant propagation protocols through in vitro culture. And I have uh, uh, taken four plants. One is uh, Valerina jatamansi, Hebenaria edgeworthi, Picoriza curua, and Podophyllum hexandrum. So this is the occurrence status and some of the chemicals, uh, constituents of uh, these four plants. Hebenaria is an orchid. It is, uh, a, in the site, it is uh, listed in the Citus appendix. Uh, these, are, uh, these are quite uh, high valued plant, uh, endangered, and these are the categories of uh, different uh, uh, endangered list. Uh, Picoriza is critically endangered under CAM and Podophyllum is also uh, <coughs> endangered under CAM. And th this data has been collected up to 2016. So points for discussion uh, which I would like to talk is how we would look uh, into the active ingredient content assessment because this is very important because a wide variation occurs. Uh, you would be knowing that even uh, in the same population, plants of uh, the same species uh, have uh, different content of these active ingredients. I will talk about the in vitro propagation, field plantation, and how an alternative way of callus suspension and hairy root culture can be effective in uh, conservation of these four species. Uh, so let's go to the how you assess. So citing uh, Podophyllum as an example, so we have studied uh, uh, the different uh, Podophyllum, Podophyllum hexandrum populations in uh, the Himalayan region uh, from, uh, in relation to altitude from 3,700 to 3,500 meters in the Garhwal region. And we found uh, different biomass uh, root shoot rate ratio and among the individuals from various populations. And we couldn't find any relation with the biomass and uh, below ground and above ground biomass uh, along with the uh, uh, altitude. Looking at the podophyllotoxin content, which is the active ingredient in, this, uh, in the rhizomes of this species, we could find a increasing uh, content with altitude. So higher we go, the higher is the content of podophyllotoxin. So populations which are located at lower altitudes uh, were having lower podophyllotoxin toxin uh, compared to the ones which are at a higher altitude you can see. So we, there was a, a good relationship with increasing altitude. So we also looked at the other sites in another study just to highlight that, that uh, populations have different uh, content um, at different regions. In another study we could not find any uh, relation with the uh, increasing altitude, if you see uh, with the increasing altitude, uh, the content doesn't really increase. And uh, we can see that maximum, uh, <clears throat> we found it of course in the higher uh, altitude populations, but the 
um, that, that clear cut relation could not be uh, obtained. So uh, we selected these uh, higher uh, content uh, populations for further studies. And so that's why uh, the um, selection of proper clones is important for any particular medicinal plant. So um, looking at an alternative source of uh, um, uh, <coughs> podophyllotoxin content, we looked at the leaves because you see the rhizomes are uh, underground and once uh, it is harvested, the entire plant is lost. So, uh, so we thought, why don't we look at the leaf? Uh, so leaf may possess uh, uh, podophyllotoxin. So going uh, and searching for different populations and the leaves of, uh, at different altitudes, we could find that the leaves uh, uh, are also uh, a good source of uh, podophyllotoxin, but the levels are not high as uh, that in the rhizomes. So, however, because it is a leaf, you can harvest the leaves, it can be a renewable source, so it has a relative importance and it can be an alternative source. Because uh, in India, we have three species of podophyllum, podophyllum hexandrum, podophyllum sicumensis, uh, uh, and uh, yeah, and the American species uh, is uh, podophyllum peltatum. So in that species, uh, the leaves contain higher levels of uh, podo uh, podophyllotoxin compared to, or uh, I mean, compared to the rhizomes of peltatum. So they are comparable, but here in hexandrum, the content of podophyllum, uh, podophyllotoxin is less compared to the rhizomes. And the levels, however, um, in the leaves are low, but in other populations by other workers in India itself, in Himachal and JNK, uh, podophyllotoxin up to 9% uh, uh, has been obtained. So in another species, uh, Valerina jatamansi, we did uh, a lot of studies on morphological aspects, looking at uh, uh, biomass, leaf area ratio, and uh, also various other um, parameters like you know, population studies. Uh, and we have assessed 25 uh, populations along the altitudinal gradient and found that uh, uh, how uh, the content of these uh, antioxidants, the phenolics and the valerianic acid, they vary. And uh, we found some good relationship with the above ground and uh, below ground and, and the aerial part uh, biomasses. Hmm. So these are the populations and uh, we could divide this population into uh, th three uh, categories based on the morphological attributes. So these detailed studies are very important for population assessment and how you can categorize uh, according to different uh, uh, populations and sites of growth. And the valerianic acid content was also analyzed in these popu 25 populations and you can see a wide uh, variation. And valerianic acid is very important uh, uh, active ingredient uh, fr obtained from uh, the valerina jatamasi. So again, the phenolic content, which are the antioxidants, they also vary. And overall, uh, these uh, studies are, of course, necessary for finding the elite clones, which can be further um, cultivated or grown. So again, the phytochemical analysis, I don't want to explain in detail. That, is, uh, that was also studied based on the altitude gradient and uh, how uh, the phenolic content varies, uh, maximum in the higher uh, altitude range, and flavonoids also, it, uh, uh, it was uh, highest in the roots, and again, the, mm, the phenolics was in both the parts, aerial and lower parts, the tannin, the, the maximum valeric was also in the aerial parts. So these are very important for assessing uh, the content for selection of elites. So again, the antioxidant uh, content in different uh, populations uh, did not explain. So these are also important. Again, the phytochemical analysis and the anti among the habitat taps. So these are uh, some of the studies on valerina on uh, antioxidant and phenolic uh, 
uh, content. So coming to the in vitro propagation of studies, uh, some uh, slides will explain how a protocol was developed. This is for Podophyllum hexandrum, which we developed uh, some time ago. And uh, these plants are already in the field, although this project was completed, but in a recently uh, taken a project by the DBT on bioprospecting with uh, various uh, institutions, we have grown these uh, uh, in vitro raised plants and planted in the field on a larger scale. Hmm. So, so in all in Picora Isa also we have done uh, large scale multiplication and field planted. Of course, in Picora Isa, uh, besides in vitro propagation, there are techniques of uh, uh, cultivation by farmers, and they are established. A large number of farmers are also uh, growing Picora Isa uh, in their field. And in Valerina Jatamasi, you see how we developed through tissue culture taking aerial shoots developed in uh, and high multiplication rate through various uh, combination of various media and uh, of course uh, these plants were again tested for the genetic fidelity which is important because many of these tissue culture raised plants may lose their genetic fidelity after some time in the field so they have been tested for um, uniformity with their mother plant and then they were field planted. So how different concentrations of PGRs were used, uh, BAP, uh, the um, NA, IA, GA, various combinations were used. These are all you know, uh, detailed studies by some of our students. And you see that this concentration, BAP, and was very effective in uh, uh, producing large number of shoots and roots, also this uh, concentration. So we have used these two concentration for large scale multiplication. Again, in Hebenaria, it is an orchid. So we have used this uh, shoot to grow callus, and these callus are friable. They were then made into suspensions, and then some of the callus were uh, converted through uh, subsequent cultures into plants. And we could also get these uh, uh, tubers uh, in, the, in the tissue culture uh, medium after some time. And then these tubers were later on analyzed. And these plants were analyzed for genetic fidelity studies uh, for checking the uh, true to type nature with the mother plant. So how you generate the shoots, and these are the various concentrations to be tried. Uh, it is uh, very time consuming. So, uh, just I put these slides for the sake of the students to show uh, one should not lose the concentration while uh, taking up studies. Sometimes they don't work. Mm, so one has to be very patient. Sometimes there is a lot of concentration. This nice table is only after a lot of uh, trials and hits and these are after uh, uh, some time. Once you standardized, you can get large number of cultures uh, you know, uh, in the lab. So these are the concentrations, so heaven area. So, and again, you see in vitro rooting and tuber formation, you have to induce it using a, a combination of various concentrations of plant hormones. The NA, which is a synthetic, IBA, these are all synthetic, difficult to metabolize by the tissues. On the other hand, um, some other compounds, uh, IA, they can be oxidized. So you use a stronger um, auxin, and then you uh, can get a good uh, amount of culture, me, uh, culture growth and also the tuber formation and also good rooting. So once you have a good rooting, you can prepare the for mass multiplication. And now uh, let's uh, see how one can field plant them. See, uh, these are uh, some of the sites in Kaljuni uh, where we have planted Pictoriza and uh, um, uh, Podophyllum. These are these are the uh, la these are the labs uh, in the lab in the sorry in the greenhouse how Podophyllum plants were growing, and this is the poly house which we constructed in the um, high altitude field station, uh, and they were hardened in there before field planting. And these are the plants which are growing after some time and this is the altitude. So plants were grown at a lower altitude in our institute at Kosi which is about 1200 meters. They were uh, hardened in the 
a field station for one or two months, and then they were field planted. So this is another uh, more recent slide uh, that I was talking about in a different DBT funded project where Dr. Mao is also a part uh, in uh, the BSI section. Uh, so in Narayan Ashram we have planted this uh, podophyllum plants which we raised uh, uh, through tissue culture and these are the sums of Valerina and this is a large area and once uh, this uh, method is standardized it will be again uh, taken up in a larger scale. So some of the growth parameters uh, which is very important because you see we grow uh, these in vitro raised plants. Um, we grow these uh, in vitro raised plants and these 13 month old seedlings were uh, compared with seedling raised plants. So, so we compared them and we found that uh, the growth parameters of in vitro raised plants and the seedling raised plants were quite similar. So, and uh, these were uh, grown at a field station in Kaljuni. See the seedling raised plants, in vitro raised plants. So just to see how the growth uh, is uh, uh, different or it's not different. So we found that they are roughly very similar to uh, seedling raised plants. So seedlings are also a good source of uh, plant material. Uh, and also, we found an aconitin uh, and pseudoaconitin content. See, uh, this is for Picrorhiza curua, and in another species, aconitum, which I have not shown as the, in the main slide, of, uh, uh, just for the sake of comparison, that aconitin content uh, in uh, seedling raised plants and in vitro raised plants were quite uh, similar. And also, people say that why don't we grow the plants uh, at a lower altitude? So, uh, in some case, in many cases, particularly the high altitude plants, uh, mm, the content will not uh, be high if you grow at a lower altitude. You see, podophyllum in relation to plant age grown at a lower altitude. This is the content. These are uh, <coughs> plants uh, of different age groups. Uh, one year, two year, and the content uh, in the rhizomes and the roots, they are quite low. So they may not be very useful and they are very low compared to high altitude. And some of the data in relation to the plant survival, uh, how the plants would survive at the end of one year season. Picrorhiza sur survives quite good compared to a conitum, and then podophyllum was a bit low. So another alternative uh, uh, way of obtaining the uh, plant metabolites, uh, secondary metabolites, or the active ingredients would be to use uh, callus suspension culture and hairy root cultures, uh, so which we have done in our laboratory. So in Heben area, so what we have done, we have used uh, Callus, and then these callus were made into suspension and they were cultured. And uh, you see how these cultures were grown, and there's a lag phase, a log phase, and a stationary phase. And you collect these, uh, uh, harvest these suspensions uh, just in the beginning of the, just at the stationary phase. Uh, you get, and these are the different uh, content of phenolic compounds once uh, we grow them in culture and under various treatments. What would be the growth, how the phenolic content will vary, and these are the phenolic compounds, how. So use of benzyl amanopurine, this is the, com the cytokinin, uh, was found uh, to be quite good for callus growth, total phenolic content, and also, methyl jasmonic acid, it is an elicitor, which actually, elicitor is a compound which, in fact, uh, induces uh, the <coughs> growth uh, of the, uh, the synthesis of uh, metabolites in many cases. So, use of methyl jasmonic acid was uh, helpful in uh, callus growth, and uh, you can see the increase in various phenolic compounds. So, these are the Detailed uh, results in corruption, it BA definitely enhanced the uh, total phenolics and antioxidant content, and it can thus uh, 
fulfills some of the active ingredient content. Of course, high, more studies are required to take it in the bioreactor scale and uh, so before uh, we embark on that. But this is a sort of a, uh, has a potential for uh, alternative source. And other workers have also studied on Podophyllum uh, hexandrum uh, to develop cell cultures, but were not so successful. I mean, mostly uh, Indian workers, uh, Chattopadhyay uh, uh, in uh, Delhi University, and also in Indian Institute of Chemical Biology, uh, and other workers in other places. They have tried, but it was not so easy to culture Podophyllum uh, in a suspension cultures. Another way of uh, in, uh, increasing the or find, looking at the active ingredient was uh, in picrorhiza curua. So we induced hairy roots. Uh, you all know that Agrobacterium rhizogenes induces uh, hairy roots uh, in nature, and that principle was applied, and that is also being applied for a large number of plant tissues uh, to uh, obtain uh, hairy root cultures of um, active in, for active ingredients. So we used uh, picrorhiza curua and how we induce the uh, uh, hairy roots through various strains uh, we have obtained from various sources. And these are the hairy roots. Initially, we grow them, and then without the antibiotic, we mm, grow them and scale it up on a liquid medium. And then uh, you confirm whether the transformation has occurred. Once uh, this gene has been incorporated, so uh, these tissues are transformed and they grow in a medium without plant hormones. And then you see these are the uh, various uh, lines of uh, hairy roots we obtained using various uh, bacterial inocula. So, so in, uh, you see line four, they, the growth is quite high. These are the growth index with time, eight weeks, you find uh, maximum growth in using the line four and strain A4AS from, obtained from Delhi. So, and once you have the um, good callus and good, yeah, and then you look at the uh, content of uh, uh, podo, this picrotin and picrotoxinin. So line four, which also showed uh, high biomass, high growth, they uh, showed uh, high picrotoxin and picrotoxin content. And this is the control. Control means uh, the um, runners from the natural source, from the wild. So this is the in root. This is the runners from the uh, nature. So you see it's quite high and it can be a good potential. So other workers have tried like in CMAP, Dr. Verma's group by, for, with Dr. Suchitra Banerjee's group, they have uh, done a good number of uh, hairy root cultures on Picrorhiza curua and in other species too. And uh, in, it has been also scaled up uh, for biomass and picrolyph content, you know, by uh, these workers. And it has thus the great potential, but other, uh, but further studies have not been carried out. So, to summarize uh, my talk, uh, uh, I can say that a wide variation exists among the active ingredient and phenolic contents in plants of the same species. In vitro propagations were established for these four medicinally important plant, which I listed. And a proper hardening is very important before we plant it in the field because there is a lot of attack by uh, microorganisms, the mm, tough temperature and all. So a proper hardening and then uh, long-term monitoring is also important whether we are getting a good establishment in the field or they are uh, able to survive. Genetic fidelity is maintained and um, so that these can be used as a package. Hmm. And then the callus and suspension cultures is definitely an alternative source. A large number of other uh, plant species are being uh, um, uh, used uh, through, uh, are being cultivated through hairy root cultures and has a great potential for Himalayan medicinal plants as well. Hmm. And uh, these are weather independent technology and uh, there's a secure you know, supply 
so you don't have to uh, wait for the weather you know like the himalayan medicinal plants many a times you uh, go to the field and you find that the seed setting is not proper you know the flowering has not been done and then you don't get enough plant material so these are weather independent techniques that have been uh, through callus suspension cultures and hairy root cultures and you can get all through but the main uh, thing is that you have to have the right clone to get maximum yield whether it is a bacteria or a fungi which are a plant material you know and these uh, phenolics and um, associated anti active activity content in these medicinal plants uh, can be effective in uh, utilizing them as an uh, supplementary food items so thank you very much for patient hearing uh, dr ma i think i have stuck to the time no, or so yes, shot uh, over shot no 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 you are right on time <laughs> so i thank all my students uh, who worked under me and all the staff of the laboratory and uh, and all these studies have been through various uh, projects of uh, dst dbt medicinal plant board and uh, you cost and of course uh, our director must be thanked for all the facilities which we have used and of course the ministry also helped a lot you know yeah thank you very much uh, thank you very much dr nandi i think you all must have uh, understand very clearly because uh, the way he has presented is very scientific and it's an excellent in uh, presentation and then what i would like to request from the student side is you should learn how to do research like how, what uh, dr nandi has presented because there you when you are doing any research you have to look into different parameters not just in one side but uh, the way he has shown how they started uh, from uh, selection of uh, clones or elite from different altitude then again from after, after uh, culturing in tissue culture how they tested again whether the active compounds are available I mean, for, uh, found in the tissue culture species or no all this different aspect from forward and backward you have to check everything then that will become a really good uh, research paper also as well as whatever you are producing it's going to be uh, successful so i think it's a really interesting and i found very enlightening thank you sir okay our next speaker is uh, uh, dr uh, barat g somkuwar he is a staff scientist from bio resources database and informatic unit infal manipur so respected chairman dear reporter and all colleague fellows so today my talk is related to the scope in design and development of the bioresource databases now earlier speaker might have already uh, given a brief introduction about what is documentation and why it is important to outline my talk i just want to say that this bioresource databases are very abundant in northeast region that we heard but what next after documentation whether it is going for some research or not so that thing basically we are going to look into this so another 20 minutes or 25 minutes we are going to look into the different databases if uh, i'm sorry that there is no internet connection otherwise i could have provided you the online demo for that uh, i requested the organizer let us see in me meanwhile if we are getting some connection then we will definitely go to that so the purpose of showing this slide is not to scare the audience definitely this is 201 million year ago but how many of we have seen this as a live none correct because from the fossils we are extrapolating this this is basically a dinosaur we don't want to extrapolate the herbarium the plant which is going to explore exploit 
before exploiting all those things we are planning to digitize it so that our future generation at least can see that they should not they should not think about the extrapolating of the species this species this is digital herbarium i think this is orchid species and dr mao is already a, a expert in the orchid so he can easily say that this is the orchid and uh, this may be some species right but what about the students those who are started their research if i'll say this then you will definitely say something about that particular species yes i have seen somewhere right but if i am just showing the fossil like only herbarium it will be really really difficult for us to judge that particular species the purpose of showing this slide is we have different biodiversity hotspot every region is rich in something some species so now biodiversity informatics they are providing impetus on species specificity and region specificity databases now how to create these biodiversity databases now the new information technology terminology come into the picture that is biodiversity informatics so how informatics we are using for documenting the species and how this documented species further we are taking to the research so i'll just touch upon a little bit what we have done what are the challenges in documentation of this species and then how what we have achieved so far so in one word it's a digitization of the bio resources using information technology in one word now what are the challenges that basically we are facing while creating these databases as you are aware about this data integration sorry data integration now see this there is no specific protocol available to design these databases every suppose every uh, say gbif global biodiversity information facility they are having their own protocol zip code zoo is having their own protocol tpif is having its own protocol now everybody is creating their own protocol so when a new researcher starting their activities or research it is difficult for them which protocol to be used so first thing is data integration is really really challenging task second is need to need for globally unique identifier so each and every species is unique and that unique identifier we have to create for successful acceptability data accuracy whether that data we are incorporating in the database is accurate or not that is really really important because different taxonomies they are using different methods suppose say bentham and hooker method linnaeus method or any other method what are method they are using update and maintenance so suppose if a particular author they find a new species that new species we have to update so that it will be available to all the users then biogeography whether a particular region is rich in that particular bio, uh, bio resources or not that we have to create there data heterogeneity now see every species is having its own features like plant is having their own features animals are having their own features the microbes are having their own features so this data heterogeneity basically is a major hurdle because we are not trying to create a unique protocol because of that then biopiracy like we don't want to use the second analytica i think cambridge analytica those who are taking the data how to do it okay so we have different objectives first is mapping of the bio resources using gis and remote sensing technology that thing early speaker already spoken about these things second is characterization and digitization of the bio resources so digitization whether it is a audio whether it is a video or whether it is a picture any format is suitable 
if you are providing accurately so suppose we have created one database and that database is having some videos like some uh, traditional uh, medicinal uh, traditional healthcare practices they are basically preparing different formulation from the plant species animal species and so on so when we are taking that particular video the video size is lost for one hour two hour and there are suppose different number of users are there different number of healers are there so the data database size will be increasing and that much data if you are creating on the web that means your database loading will be more so that thing we have to take into consideration collaborate since we are saying that our northeast region is having rich biodiversity unless we collaborate it will be difficult for getting the exact information design and development so once we have developed the database it should be online so that the global perspective it should reach to the different people across the globe implementation so how we have basically implemented so see we have the data the people they are having different information i'll just say take the example of this uh, uh, one database what we have we are developing this is manipur traditional medicine which is basically traditional healthcare practices so what we have done we have basically taken the information about their taxonomic detail so right from the name common name vernacular name all those details we are cataloging then formulations whether it is animal formulation whether it is a plant formulation whether it is a fish whether it is a marine or whether it is any other formulations so all those information we are incorporating in this particular field then we are having biogeography from which location it is collected audio visual the healers narrating how the formulation is prepared gallery their pictures whether it is a plant image whether it is a formulation image whether it is a video how they are preparing healer details literature related to that particular species so it should be a comprehensive database then we are having some biological activity suppose if a particular healer they are using different plant combination so that plant combination basically they are using something like say leaves stem bark root fruit anything so when they are having a different constituent that constituent information we are incorporating using this active constituent this active constituent so this active constituent basically we are creating different tabs so main constituent and other constituent so not all the constituents are important for the biological activity only specific constituents are important so what we have done basically we use pumpkin pubmed and if the chemi chemical information is not available then we are drawing by chem draw so chem draw we are basically chem sketch and chem draw we are basically drawing the structure putting in a pdb format and then all the information we are putting in the metadata so this metadata basically putting all the information related to that formulation related to the plant related to that healers then we are using here star topology here basically informatics come into the picture then suppose a user is triggering a certain query the query will first go to this mysql via integrating with the php it will go to the metadata fetch the information and show the information to the user user with a click copper button so it should not be a browsing all the time then this particular uh, marvin sketch we use for the drawing different chemicals then jmol basically how this particular chemi chemical looks like so the, all those information we have categorized and we have put in that online database this database is under construction so i'm not in the position to show you this database online at this moment but definitely in future whenever i'm coming for the next lecture i'll definitely show you the online database the architecture interface so say suppose if i am talking with your you with a language say the english if all the people are speaking english and understanding english then it is easier for us if i'll say my own language karnataka that is marathi most of you doesn't understand so the same way the database will have a different language 
and they are interacting through this interface. So this is called as architecture interface. While retrieving the data, this interface is essential. This, is, this supports hardware and software. So hardware, we are having the Windows 2003 server. We are using MySQL database. And for showing the seasonality, we use the JavaScript programming. So wherever a particular plant is available, that information we see with one. And wherever the plant is not available, that particular information showed by zero. So it's a very simple logic we have included here. Now, while nomenclature in this database we are having certain criteria and this criteria basically universally accepted and right, Mr. Uh, Bharat, you try to show what you have done otherwise uh, this uh, we are since we are short of time uh, let's uh, see what you people have done definitely sir so uh, that is the next slide only so this is basically uh, i think everybody knows them there is no point of discussing this thing Okay, so we have so far we are developed 10 after database just for the sake of this I have included seven databases here. So here basically we have developed the bamboo database, gingivirus knowledge base, medicinal and edible insects of Manipur, citrus database, orchid database, banana database and Manipur traditional practices that we have incorporated in our database. Well, you may say that what is the need to develop this database? Whether somebody is using? Yes. From this graph, we have just said three databases. We have developed in 2012 and this is 2018. The user, global user access is more. It is increasing. You can see here, this blue color stands for the Miman. This is for citrus and this is for banana. Right from 2012 to 2018, these databases are accessed across the globe and the accessing countries are more than 80 countries that are accessing these databases. This is one of the knowledge base. This actually couple of uh, database I want to show you online, but uh, let me check whether it is available different new species which is uh, which we have found during our survey okay you can I am unable to focus this otherwise I could have shown at least one uh, names not coming sir I am just trying to ex ex So the way we have basically representing information is like this. Suppose this is a gallery. So different type of uh, insect you can see which is used for the medicinal and edible purposes. Then we are having different economic information. Whether, what is the market value? What is basically how it is sold? Whether it is raw or whether it is fried or whether it is some other mechanism. Then we have the information about the taxonomic detail. This is the home page. This is the seasonality when, when it is found. Which particular season the particular insect is found. Then we are having the different search criteria. Then we are having the different uh, this uh, literature information related to that particular insect. This is the 3D view of the global statistics. Just now I have shown you. This is more than say suppose 80 countries at this moment. This is all data. This is uh, totally say, uh, around 58 countries it is showing, 2015 data. Different countries they are using, even India is having highest users, 68 to 69%. This is Musa, that is a banana database. This is 3D global view. This is access around 46 different countries across the globe. This is different information about the citrus. This is gallery. This is a GPS information and from where it is collected. What are the different plants, seeds and fruit information. Then what are the different uh, uh, morphological characters. Bamboo. Bamboo we have just developed. This is the just summary. Uh, here also I am unable to show you the database online. But basically what I have done. This is uh, some list of the species we have. We can see here. 
we have provided information about the taxonomy we have provided information about where it is finding what is the local name of the different northeast region there are different uh, pictures then geo by geography from where it is collected this is the gallery where i can show you the manipur species and the sikkim species these are the literature associated with the bamboo then we have done some aflp analysis so what is the next once we have created the database what is the next isn't it so from the morphological we can say certain classifications are there so what we have done we have done the aflp analysis in collaboration with the bose institute to estimate what is the basic uh, categorization so this is one of the species described by uh, dr h b naitani dendrogalamus manipurianus which is a new species and uh, which is uh, available across the northeast so earlier worker they have said that bambusa oliviriana from the traditional taxonomy they said bambusa oliviriana and bambusa bambosa has the same link from from aflp analysis it is having a different link totally different link this bambusa balkoa is sharing in uh, same category with the thrissostica sabensis most of these bamboo species used for a different purpose these are the different edible bamboo shoots now bamboo shoots when it is edible there are percentage of i mean there are chances of cyanogen content so the total cyanogen content of this for different edible species we have analyze so total 15 different different type of bamboos bamboo shoots used from this we have found that chimno bamboos are callosa which is at the higher altitude is safest edible bamboo uh, edible bamboo shoot then we have the orchid database different species are there search criteria there are some genus criteria scientific name and then simple search criteria if you can select the dendrocalamus it will show all the list of the dendrocalamus species then we can get the information about the taxonomy then morphology then distribution then flowering season references and somebody if interested for searching that data that links are provided this is the gallery manipur traditional medicines we have provided different information like taxonomic information scientific name local name biogeography then socio economic prospect suppose particular plant is not harvested in some days or suppose particular plant is harvested in monday or uh, any week days those socio economic information we have provided we are under process of developing king chili database and this is about the security so whatever we have provided whether it is secure or not so what we have given we have given one endian security server we have link with our mysql database so when if there is any artificial robotics those who want to take the data extract the data that is actually firewalled so you can see here one such information try france is trying to get the information so this particular information is declined from our server endia server bioinformatics if time permit then i'll just go ahead with this so bamboo genome this genome basically published by this chinese academy of sciences phylostichus this phylostichus species ssr identification we have carried out sir is it okay yeah, you, you, uh, why not i think you summarize because we are really uh, running out of time all right sir so ssr identification and primary designing we have carried out on this bamboo you know uh, we use some perl script we use this garuda facility because we are getting the uh, we are getting the out of memory uh, calculations here this is uh, how we have done we have basically having mysql server here we have developed the ssr ssr then transfer to the mega cloud here it is super computing facility 128 gb ram they are running this uh, primary designing software and from this primary designing we are getting the information here and then user can access this information this is the basic uh, search result what we have got so suppose if you are searching with this id you are getting the information about the ssr and then primers left and right primer their temperature conditions this is another uh, this uh, uh, gene interactions where we have basically this uh, proteins and this protein is from the plant smut uh, zizania latifolia we have just uh, isolated this information from the geo gene ontologies here you can find out the new proteins what we have found 
this is bioinformatics annotation we have done this is molecular modeling basically we have found this uh, quercetin ellagic acid and uh, interleukin all right that's all thank you sir Thanks.